Hi, this is Dr. Alan Mendelson from Eye Surgeons and Consultants in Hollywood, Florida. Today I'm going to talk about herpes simplex virus. There are eight different human herpes viruses. Of the eight, what I'm going to talk about today is herpes simplex 1 and 2. Now, the conventional wisdom is from the waist up, it's herpes simplex number 1. From the waist down, it's herpes simplex 2, and that's from genital secretions. But sometimes number 1 can be below, 2 can be above, so I'm not going to really differentiate going further. It's just that of the herpes simplex 2, it is definitely the single most common sexually transmitted disease affecting the human eye. The herpes simplex 1, though, is still much, much more prevalent than the sexually transmitted herpes virus 2. So what happens is with the herpes simplex virus, the primary infection is what will happen is with the eyes, here's a picture that I'm gonna show you of a youngster, and by far most commonly, it's an adolescent, teenager, somebody in their 20s, um, where they'll come in and the eyelids are red, they're swollen, eyes a little bit red. But this is a subtle thing. There could be many different things that can actually cause this. So we have to do a complete exam. The lymph nodes usually are enlarged in front of the ears. That's called preauricular adenopathy. And there's some characteristic changes. Usually we can tell that it's the herpes virus. Sometimes it can be tricky, though. Now, one researcher speculates that perhaps of all youngsters and people up through their teens who have an eye infection caused by a virus, they believe maybe 25% are herpes. I think that number's actually kind of high. Nevertheless, this is more subtle. Obviously, this youngster has an eye infection, but just from the picture, you can't just say, boom, that this is herpes. Um, a little bit more severe, the eyelids are red, a little bit of a subtle ulceration, the conjunctiva is bright red, so it's very obvious that something's going on with this eye. Now, just from this picture alone, unless you look up close, you really cannot tell bacterial versus viral versus fungal versus something got into the eye, an allergic reaction. Um, but once one looks closely, that differentiation of herpes usually is pretty easy. And then sometimes it'll be much more severe where telltale signs, um, this eye, there are large vesicles, the eyelids have ulcerations, and just looking, uh, someone walks in the door like this, really in one second looking, you know, ah, this is definitely herpes simplex virus. So whether it's more subtle, moderate, or more severe, when it's a primary herpes simplex, what we do is we immediately initiate treatment with oral antivirals. The oral antivirals are crucial to decrease the symptoms, decrease the sign, can make a profound difference. So of everybody who has this herpes virus, the virus actually never leaves the human body. It lies dormant, or what we call latency. So there's latency in the ganglia, it's the neural fibers. And what happened is months, years, decades later, there can be a reactivation. Now, what triggers the reactivation in some people while others don't have this occur? Sometimes it happens out of the clear blue, but more commonly, stress, strain, a surgical procedure, being immunocompromised, um, things like that definitely can have a profound effect. But also the ultraviolet sunlight. There have been many case studies that show Without sunglass protection, the ultraviolet light rays make it more likely to have a reactivation of the herpes virus. And lastly, some women um, consistent with their menstrual periods will also have a reactivation. So what happens? The most common scenario by far is to have a little blister on the lips, side of the mouth, side of the nose. 
So this is actually more of a classic one, um, upper lip. And uh, we've all seen this. They're very, very, very commonplace. Um, they can occur once a year. They can occur more often. They might occur only every several years. But this is a reactivation of the herpes simplex virus. And again, it's more common to have it on the lips, side of the mouth, side of the nose. Sometimes, though, unfortunately, boom, it goes straight into the eye. It can cause a conjunctivitis around the eye, but the more severe is when it afflicts the cornea. When it afflicts the cornea, we call that herpetic keratitis when it's deeper. Sometimes it's more superficial layers. So this picture, it's a little bit hard to tell. When we put a little dye in the eye for examination, they're called corneal dendrites. This is disease, the superficial layers of the cornea. So the cornea has five separate layers. The epithelium's the most superficial, Bowman's, stroma, decimate, and the endothelium. So you can see it lighting up a little bit of green. There's two separate dendrites. This is caused with epithelial disease from a reactivation of the herpes virus. Now, the patient always knows something's going on. They'll complain of severe pain that feels like someone's sticking a knife or needle in the eye, jabbing, poking, foreign body sensation, tearing. The eye is red. It's sensitive to light. It is not subtle whatsoever. So somebody who has a reactivation and it hits the eye, um, it is very significant. Now, there are more severe ones. That picture I showed, it was the patient that was very early onset. But when it gets more severe, you can see deep ulceration in the epithelium, probably a little bit deeper than that. And this eye is in excruciating pain. Sometimes the reactivation can be deeper into the stroma. Now, this is this patient cannot even see the biggie on the chart. They're basically legally blind, at least hopefully just temporarily, but it's deep into the stroma. It is a stromal keratitis. Patient has severe pain, profuse tearing, and the vision has dropped considerably. And then also you can have deeper in the stroma where the eye is not bright red, but you can have a lot of inflammation with scar tissue. For all of these patients with the herpetic corneal involvement, the oral antivirals are crucial, sometimes topicals when it's superficial, the antivirals. And then the tricky part is when to or not to add topical steroids depending on the clinical presentation, uh, we often will add topical steroids. And the reason is it decreases scar tissue formation. So of all the causes that are caused by a microorganism, microorganism being, of course, viral, fungal, bacterial, it's actually the herpes virus that is the number one cause of a microorganism causing a severe decrease in quality of vision. Uh, and frequently, it can be just a dramatic decrease. And again, it's caused by the herpes simplex virus. In another talk, we'll talk about the herpes zoster, which most people refer to as shingles. But again, in summary, herpes simplex is very, very common. There's type 1 considered to be above the waist, type 2 below the waist. Whether it's type 1 or type 2, it is very prevalent and uh, patients need treatment right away. So the primary where it's just the infection, usually adolescent, teenage years, sometimes in the 20s, and then the reactivation that occurred thereafter. But prompt treatment always makes a very huge difference in clearing it up, the signs, the symptoms. But very importantly, we want to decrease scar tissue formation so that there isn't a permanent decrease in vision. Thank you very much.